in a spot of bother, aren't we, Mother Earth? Hmm? Okay, so we're going to have to do some calculations and sort things out, aren't we, people of humanity? Hmm? Right, let's get on with it, shall we? We don't have much time. We're going to have to save the world in as little time as we have left. Because now for the last 15, 20 years, the number of times we've come near to nuclear obliteration doesn't bear thinking about. Right? It's been on the cards once or twice due to various despots in foreign lands with their nuclear missiles getting the horn and thinking they're the man. Right? No. This is bullshit. Right? This is not the way it works. Okay? Look at this graph. Standard XY axis graph. Okay? So here, along the X axis, we are going to put time since since the beginning of time. Since the beginning of time. And here we're going to put 1945. And here we're going to put 2020. Now, if we take the lineage pre-1945 of time, and this is a graph of y-axis on how much global wealth has grown since the dawn of first recorded time, then the graph, according to Superintelligence, a book I've read and is well published, very well written, very well researched, very, very intellectual and cerebral read, it goes like this. Now, that was not a mistake, and neither was that, okay? These little bumps, okay, so we're about 10% we're about here. 10% global wealth, and this is the growth chart, measuring the growth of global chart. Up here, in 2020, since circa 1950, after the end of World War II, world growth, collectively, collective world riches, have escalated, which you could parry with increasing education and intelligence. This is up to 400%. That's since the dawn of time. The first blip arose around the time of the American Civil War, which was funnily enough when the Gatling gun was invented, a means of rapidly destroying the enemy using efficient technology. That's a bit of a dark side to this graph, but the point remains is that growth ever since the use of the two, only two A-bombs to ever be used, has risen exponentially. And I think that's in direct result to the fear subconsciously latent within humanity to ever see that again. Right? So we don't want to live like that. We invert the terror. We can't live in terror, unless you're an absolute weirdo. So you have to, you have to focus the mind, right? And that makes us immediately more intelligent. Right? Instead of being thuggish, brutal, hostile, bellicose, warlike, volatile, we go into the mind and we go intelligent. And this is what has been happening. I bet you anything, collective readership on Earth is a similar graph down here. So since the, the dawn of the print, um, writing and very basic graphemes and symbology to about the printing press around here in time, that would have been a similar graph. And now we've got the internet where even tramps have more technology homeless in their pocket than was used to land a spaceship on the moon. And yes, that did happen, I believe. Because I can't really take anyone seriously who doesn't trust the integrity of humanity to deliver its own achievements with great glory, and then just to have it all smitten down to nothing by the paranoid and the ill-educated. It's disgusting to me. Absolutely disgusting. So anyway, that's by the by. Now the point of this whole symposium, or lecture if you will, is to point out that 400% growth, if we were to do something stupid, anyone in the world, like release a series of nukes, I think this would seriously begin to dwindle and go bally trousers down south of the facts. Right? But if we hold on, and during our testing times, when you, when you think, Jesus, how much more can we take? Right? That's when we dig deep and dig into the faith and hold the piece of the mega real and the knowledge. Because our technology is just going through the roof now, children. And if you take the level of innovation and good ideas and progression in imagination and the world in general in innovation and technology 
again, since this, this, this key point in just in 1945, we could, we could imagine, given the growth we've had in the last three or four or five decades, technologically specifically, and the wonders it has given us, where will we be in another hundred years if we keep the faith and muscle through? We could be in some glorious, techno, uber-cosmic, wonderful, all things solved wonderland. I believe in the power of genii, right? I'm not one of these pick up, people to pick up an iPhone and then slag off the, the infrastructure of the highly intelligent system. Because I'm using it. I think it's great. I think it's all super intelligent, right? My fears are not to do with technology. I think they're run by clever, responsible, decent, deeply intelligent people. My fears are more to do with supernatural people and human bastards being influenced by demonic, skullduggerous, nefarious psychologies. And that is actually having a much more underlying, threatening problem to the fabric and the cohesion of society within the world at large than the inventors of the nuclear weapons they've yet so far done. And that's a fact we're going to have to tolerate. So, uh, apart from calling the Ghostbusters, what can we do? Well, I, that's, not my, that's not the whole point of being a scientist. My whole point is to tell you about this, right? Look into it. Look into the world. You'll see this. I'll see if I can find the book. No. Bereft is my soul. Bereft is my heart. Where is the book that I was reading? Well, you just have to believe me. It's called Super Intelligence. And the reason I read it is because it was recommended by Bill Gates. Now, I don't know what you think of him, but I, used to, I don't think he's the Antichrist. And I think his computer software, as a, just a general user, not an expert on these things, I think, wow, I couldn't do that, could you? Well, I'm pretty impressed by the incredible intelligence of computer systems now in the modern world. And the advent of quantum computing is something, Lord only knows what that might generate. I mean, we could end up generating our own universe, like God did, using advanced systems based on what the key things that the scientists and the brilliant minds are doing now. Even the Christians aren't stupid in that. We're going through revelatory periods of revelation, but not all in a horror, famine, death, brutal, chaos way. In some real spiritual value, a lot of people are finding God, finding a relationship with God, and realising there is more, there is something supernatural, like, a, like an onion-layering uber system around our consciousness which inhabits and operates within the arguably sentient atmosphere. Okay, and when I say sentient atmosphere, because if you've had one prayer answered, which I have, I've had at least two or three, and that's after sincere prayer, the universe, the, the, or at least the atmosphere of the world, I don't know about the whole universe, let's just say yeah, I don't know, right, but at least the atmosphere of the world, which looks like it's alive from space, because it's glowing, it's alive, you know, it looks lively, it's another word for alive, isn't it? Oh, it's alive! It's not, it might not be sentient, like an, an animated toy, but it's, it's living, it's sort of life, right? So you say the atmosphere, if you're a believer in the Lord, is sentient, because it would have to be to hear, pick up, and answer your prayers immediately, right? That's the only explanation that can be derived from the answers to the prayers that I've had on an objective point of view. It doesn't mind what the prayer was for, what it did, or what happened to me. That's the subsidiary aspect. That was what it was good for initially. But in looking back, I've thought long and hard about the nature of these prayers and miracles I've experienced. And I can only say, I think the universe might be sentient, because when I got visited by angels and aliens, that was to do a new city, which was a far-off galaxy, millions of miles away, right? Or a far-off star constellation, binary star system at like that, anyway. So the point is, is that I really do think the universe could be sentient, and therefore we are 3D physical operation, operators, and, and we're operational, within this sentient universe, okay? So we've got to really try and be smart, and we've got to be clever, and we've got to be decent, and we've got to be caring, right? I know the angels care. That was one of the subliminal lessons I got from their visitation. They care. They don't want me to die, right? I'm here for a reason. I don't actually yet fully know what that reason is, apart from maybe be a father to my beautiful daughter. But I know I'm here for a reason to God, because why would God keep me alive all the time? I um, don't think I haven't been suicidal, mate. I've been through the works, and you can see my psychiatric report if you don't believe me. But I am still here, and I have overcome, and I am doing better at the moment. I would say these days, but you know, he'll turn on an attack and I'll be fucked within a day. But no, 
So far, so good. Tam Lam J Tam Bonham, as is my family motto. And with that, I would just like to say, remember this graph, because 400% international wealth growth, growth has occurred on planet Earth since the end of World War II, since a 10, 15, 20% rise since the dawn of time. That is absolute graphical, registered, recorded knowledge, visually, scientifically, of mass human intellectual intelligent development, thanks to victory in conflict and, the, and, and an attempt to create world harmony under one utopian glory of pseudo-freedom. And we're getting there. America, keep legalising where we be. England, follow suit, because I ain't fighting for a country that stifles my passions. Okay, that's them done. Sleepy bebos. Have a good one.